This tutorial is part of our full stack React Django DRF channels project, DJ Chat. You can watch this tutorial and many more from our YouTube course playlist, or the whole course, including access to additional resources from our Udemy course. The Udemy course link, which provides the best price for the course, is in the video description. You may be familiar in Django with annotation. So in Django, annotation is a feature that allows you to add calculated fields to a query set. It is used to perform complex calculations on query set data that cannot be achieved using simple filtering or ordering. If we take a look at our models here, we can see that we have a members field here in the server. And this is a many to many field to the user model, or we've called it the account model, but where user data is stored. So we're going to record which member which account, which user is associated to which server or has subscribed to a particular server. So we probably need a way of being able to count how many members a server has. So whenever we go to um, select a particular server, maybe we also want to include data related to how many people already subscribed to that particular server. So we're going to need a way of calculating that data. So I think this is a good example of using annotation to add additional data to the data model or to the uh, data that is returned back to the front end. So we're going to make this an option in our filter that we have been developing previously. So let's go ahead and call this with uh, num members. So with number with number of members. Um, so that's going to be a boolean. So we just grab that there. So we're going to pass true or false in. If we want to include the number of members, we can therefore add true in the parameters that we pass in. If not, we don't have to. So with num mem, so we just need to copy that in. It's a bit of a long one. Okay. Right. So we've not now got that in place. Um, we now need to create an annotation. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, do that before quantity, maybe. So if with num members, so we need to say self dot query set equals self dot query set, uh, and then we use annotate. Okay, so I'm going to include num members equals. So what is num members referring to? Let's take a look in the models here. So the num members is a new field that we're going to create and include in our query set. And what we want to do is we want to count the number of members. So let's go back into our view. So that's the field what's going to be created. And then we want to use count. So then count the number of member. So the field is just called member, not members. So that's important. And then we're going to need to just bring in count, uh, not from there. Uh, so count is going to be found in the Django models, Django.db.models. Let's import count. There we go. Right. So that's going to count the number of members in the particular server and then it's going to create a new field num members so we can then access that if that data is then passed to the front end. If we quickly look back here at the data, something that is returned is going to be a list of all members related to that particular server. So we need to ask ourselves, is that data really going to be necessary or needed every time we access a server because let's imagine we had a million members every time we return channel server or server data sorry um, it's going to return a million numbers here and that isn't necessarily going to be very useful information and is something we probably want to call separately so i'm going to remove the member field here so it doesn't get included when we return this data and then we're going to add the new data, which is the calculation of how many members the server has. 
Now, I appreciate that some of these decisions that I'm making sound very much ad hoc. and We don't necessarily have a very big plan at this moment, but hopefully that makes sense and it's starting to give you an idea of some of the decisions that are needed to be made, typically in the design phase, but can move into the development phase and be captured at that point. Now, of course, this is just a, a personal project that we're building here, so we aren't necessarily too focused on the requirements, but it's always good to have a, a set of requirements, I think, because it's very easily to, easy to um, go a little bit too crazy and end up with a massive set of requirements. It takes way too long to complete your small project. So it can be better to start with a basic set of requirements and then start to think about adding later on and try and be very strong-minded in terms of not trying to move away from the initial requirements. So to get the baseline started first before you start moving into more advanced features. Right. So uh, where are we? So we have this. So we got we got to now return this data, right? So we've we're now going to include this data, but of course we need to serialize it. So we need some sort of uh, way of serializing this data so that we can return it to the front end. First up, let's go ahead and exclude the member field that we're no longer needing. So member. Now you can go ahead, instead of defining fields all, you can just specify fields individually that you want to return. So I'm just going to include member. Okay. Don't forget to add the comma here at the end. Right, so now we need to include the number of members. Now, something you might want to avoid is empty fields. So returning an empty field. So if this didn't have a member, it would just return member and then the square braces and that's it. There'd be no data there. So I do want to try and avoid that. And of course, that might happen if a channel doesn't have any members. So I want to take that into consideration when I'm developing this next component. Plus, it just gives us a uh, an excuse to utilize the two representation function. Right, so let's go ahead now and add a new function. Um, well, first of all, actually, let's um, make sure we can add, create, let's just create this new field. So this is going to be num members equals, and we're going to use serializes dot and now we're going to be utilizing the serializer mess method field, right? So this is a field class that allows you to include any custom methods to the serializer to generate a field value that is not derived from the model attributes. And that's exactly what we're doing here, right? So we're going to be deriving a value from the utilizing annotate. So let's utilize the serializer method field. There we go. And now we can think about adding some data to it. Now you might be thinking that by simply adding this here, it will just return by default a, a blank uh, data point. But in actual fact, if we try it, you can see here that it does tell us that the object essentially has no data. We're not passing any data into it, so we can't use it as of yet. So we want to make a custom method with the name num members to pass some data into that uh, that field. So let's go ahead. So to create a, a custom method, we're going to be utilizing get underscore and then the name of the field, which is going to be num members. If we just try and visualize what's going on at this point, we have run a query and we have now returned data from the database. Now, in that data, we have this num members field, which has counted how many members there is associated to every server that we return from the database. Now, we're going to pass that data through the serializer. At the moment, Django doesn't know that this data here that's referenced by num members is related to this new field that we're going to create. So what we need to do is we just need to tell Django um, that that data in that query set we've returned, that num members field, should correlate to this number of member fields that we want to serialize. So that data in our query set should be placed right here. Right, so let's go ahead and do that. So self, and we need the object. And what we're going to do then for <clears throat> uh, for each object that's returned, we're going to use has attributes. So we're going to check for the 
we're going to check for num members field. Need a comma there. Num members. Okay, just double check we've called it num members. Yeah, num members. Okay. And then what we want to do is just say then return um, object dot num members. Okay, else we're just going to return none. There we go. So when the data is serialized, Django will hit num members and simply ask um, itself, well, what does this data refer to? Well, it's going to fire off this function. And then it's going to grab the num members data from the query set instance and then replace this field with the num members from the database if it exists. If it doesn't exist, it's just going to return none. So let's go ahead and refresh again. And this time we now have the num members. And apparently we don't have any num any members inside of this server here. Um, I'd imagine there should be one at least because we have added that. So um, you can see this returns null. So everything is returning null at the moment. Now, let's just double check our data. So let's go back into channel or server, sorry, and then go to server. So we should have one member. So I'm just going to um, press shift here and highlight both and press save. So they be both become a member. So we should have two members of server one. Now, of course, I'm sure you're not as stupid as I am. Um, obviously, we need to pass that parameter in. Otherwise, we won't initiate that option in our filter. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so this is called with num members equals, and that's going to be true. And this time you can see that it is now, in actual fact, being calculated. And we're now returning the number of members associated to each server. Uh, server two has one member and server one has two members. Now, remember what I mentioned earlier, the fact that if we don't pass that in, we don't necessarily want to actually return this field if it's null. So maybe that's an option. Maybe you do want to return that. Um, that will then indicate or be able to indicate the fact that we don't have any members associated. Maybe you want to return zero instead of null, for example. Um, but let's just go ahead and actually remove that from, from here, because remember, it is an option. Now, if a server did have null and we wanted to use the filter, then we could utilize that to calculate the fact that the server has no users. So if we don't run with the number of users, we probably don't want to see that or have that return. So let's just remove that from the data that's returned, should we not choose to make that calculation. So it is possible for us to manipulate, change the serialized object, or once the, the data has been serialized, and we can do that through the function to representation. So this is going to provide us the option now of manipulating the data. So at this point, let's imagine we have requested data from the database. We've now serialized that data. And now we're in a place where we can make some additional changes. So what we're going to do here is if the num members doesn't have any values, we're simply just going to remove that field from being returned to the front end. In actual fact, I'm going to change my mind here. I'm going to do something slightly different. And hopefully that's going to give you a little bit of a a better idea or give you some more tools that you potentially you can use or ways to work with serializers. Now, if you're going back into the views here, what we've done so far is we've created a filter. Let's not remember. Let's not remember. Let's not forget that. So we created a filter here with num members. We pass in that parameter and then we run this if statement and run the count for the number of members. So what we're going to do here is we're going to utilize this Boolean true that we're going to pass in, and we're going to pass that into the serializer. So we're going to pass in the fact that we are trying to utilize this filter into the serializer. So we're going to pass that in as context. So in the serializer here, what we're going to do is we're going to add that in. So we're simply just going to specify context um, equals, and I'm going to call that num members and so there's key value situation going on here so that needs to be that's the key and then the value is going to be with num members so that's what we're passing in remember in the filter so that's true 
or if we don't add that into our filter, that parameter, false. So we're going to pass that in and we're going to use this information, reference this and use this information to decide whether to include the field in the return data. Right, so we're going to pass that into our serializer. Uh, let's go back to our serializer here. So now we can use that information to finish off the two representation. So what we're going to do here, like I said, is if this data, if we have specified to return the number of members, then we're going to return that field. If we haven't specified that, then we're simply not going to return that field. So here, first of all, we need to grab the data, the serialized data, if you like, to representation. Um, so let's grab the instance. And now we can go ahead and say num members uh, equals. So we're going to grab the num members from context. So self dot context dot get. Now remember, this is the Boolean true false that we're passing in from the view. So that should be uh, num member. So this is the this is a reference to this key here. Obviously, this is the data. This is the key. So we're using this key to grab this data that we passed in. That's the um, the filter true that we're passing in. Remember what I mean by this is the up the top here in the yard, this true here we're passing in. All right, so go back into the serializer here. So we grab that data and now we can run an if, if not um, num members. So if we don't pass true in, if we aren't going to be utilizing that field, then what we want to do is we want to grab, get the data instance, and then we use pop and that's going to remove the field num members. Remove the field num members from the serialized data. And then we return, oh, don't forget to return the data. So it returns everything else. And there we go. So that should remove the field if we haven't specified it in our filter and include it if we have. So let's give this a go, I guess. Right, so this, we have included it here. So I do a refresh and you can see the data is active, num members two, uh, num members one in that server. And then if we remove this, don't use it in our filter, you can see that that has now been removed. Maybe you can start to see the complexity and one of the weaknesses of maybe utilizing a filter like this. As it gets more complex, we add more components, um, potentially then conflicts with other features of this filter. And that's probably where testing and obviously design or thinking about design before we start building this comes into play here. Um, having a good testing structure here will be very uh, useful to ensure that we don't start breaking any of the previous features when we add some additional functionality here to our filter. If you like, just as a last task before we move on, let's just remove all the resources that we don't need just to remove any of the red flagged items. So we don't need category there just yet. So remove that. So everything is nice and clear now.